Help support Name Explain by leaving a like and a comment, sharing this video and by subscribing to the channel. Across the globe, chances are you will find a food being referred to as a dumpling, whether that be in recipe books, restaurant menus, or on the shelves of a supermarket. Yet most of the time, a food name only really applies to one kind of food. Like if you ask for an apple, whether that be in France, Ethiopia, or Paraguay, you will be given the same kind of food. This isn't the case with dumplings, however. If you went to a Chinese restaurant and ordered dumplings, then straight after went to a Jamaican restaurant and ordered dumplings, you will be given two pretty different pieces of food. Dumplings in Chinese cuisine tend to be small at somewhat crescent shaped things, often being a little translucent and can be filled with a variety of things. A Jamaican dumpling however is a much bigger bit of food, rounder and bulkier than the Chinese food of the same name. They are often left empty but in some cases have beautiful cheesy centres. These are two different kinds of foods to say the least. Yet these are not the only kinds of dumplings out there. Dumplings are found in nations in every continent on our planet. There's Chinese and Jamaican dumplings as well as Japanese ones, Polish ones, Peruvian ones, British ones, American ones ones and Ethiopian ones, just to name a few. And all these dumplings also vary from one another. How on earth did this fun little word of dumpling end up being applied to so many different pieces of food? To help us understand this, we need to understand what exactly a dumpling really is. And what it isn't, isn't one specific food. Dumpling is instead the name for a certain kind of food, with there being different kinds of dumplings, which at the same time also get referred to as just dumplings. The loosest definition of what can constitute a dumpling is a food of some kind, which is wrapped around a dough of some kind, then either baked, boiled or fried. This also means dumplings can be savoury or sweet. And while that's the broad definition, some people still argue it. Some believe a true dumpling isn't fried, which disallows certain dumplings from being dumplings. The Jamaican dumpling in example is fried, so it's debated. Likewise, they don't always have a filling, which can make things confusing too. If we go along with this definition of a dumpling, it means that a huge amount of foods can actually be called dumplings, even ones we don't always link with the term. Take jam donuts in example. Their jam wrapped in dough, so they technically are dumplings. Even ravioli can be considered a dumpling, as they are pasta dough with meat or something else within them. What this also means is that while all these foods are referred to as dumplings, many of these dumplings have unique names unto themselves. Chinese cuisine in example has many kinds of dumplings. This includes zhaozi, baozi and wontons. Japan's most known of dumpling is called the gyoza. Poland's dumpling is called the pierogi. Empanadas are the dumplings of choice in Spain and other Hispanic nations. And there's even and the tilo, the dumpling of Ethiopia. However, there are some kinds of dumplings which are just called dumplings, like the ones found in Jamaica, sometimes referred to more specifically as Jamaican dumplings. These are all different kinds of foods that fall under the dumpling umbrella. Suffice to say, it can get pretty confusing referring to them all as just dumplings. Calling them all dumplings is kind of like referring to all kinds of pies as just pie. You should probably refer to a dumpling by a specific name and not just as a dumpling, unless it's actually called a dumpling. You know what, I've said the word dumpling quite a few times in this video already, and I'm completely fine with that. Dumpling is an incredibly fun word to say, so I'm going to try and get it in this video as many times as possible. So why don't we next get to the bottom of where this word of dumpling actually comes from. Dumpling is believed to be a word of English origins, coming from a specific part of England, East Anglia, and it is seen as being part of the Norfolk dialect. England is full of all different kinds of dialects and accents, and while we all know about the various northern or southwestern accents, the Norfolk dialect dialect is one that seems to go under most people's radars. The dialect is responsible for a variety of words that have gone on to wider usage, like claggy in example. Dumpling might possibly be the dialect's biggest claim to fame however. The reason English could change so much here is due to the fact that this part of the country remained somewhat isolated due to the Fens, a marshland which made it hard to access in the past. It's believed Dumpling arrived in East Anglian English via a low German word of some kind, possibly their word of dumpling lump, which meant lump. It's easy to see why dumplings would be compared to lumps. They're kind of like little lumps of tasty goodness. This might also be where we get the adjective of dumpy from too, meaning something or someone is short and stout. However, dump, as in throw something on the ground with force, comes from different origins. And it's from this word of dump, where we get the word of dump from, as in a place rubbish is taken to, and the idea of getting dumped, as in being broken up with. The earliest use of dumpling in regards to a food comes from 1600, 
word, and refers specifically to a Norfolk dumpling. Yep, Norfolk does indeed have its own unique kind of dumpling, known simply as the Norfolk dumpling. It could be argued that this is the original dumpling, the dumpling of all dumplings, yet at the same time, it's not the first ever dumpling. While this covers the origin of the word dumpling, foods that we now call dumplings have existed long before the coining of that word. Take the Chinese Zhaozi style of dumpling an example, they are thought to be almost 2000 years old. Likewise, a Catalan cookbook from the 1500s mentions empanadas. Both these predate the Norfolk dumpling and the coining of that word. What this also shows us is that the Norfolk dumpling isn't the great grandparent of all dumplings. It's not like this little guy from Norfolk found its way across the globe and inspired all these other ones. Different kinds of dumplings were created independently from one another at different times around the world. And this makes sense. While dumplings of any kind are super tasty and there's a ton of variety in them, they are at their heart pretty simple. It's not surprising that people in China, Spain, Britain and other places all have the same idea to wrap something in dough at different times independently from one another. But how on earth was it that this little dumpy word from Alan Partridge land came to represent an entire category of food found all across the globe? Well, we don't know. There doesn't really seem to be a single solid answer to that question. It's not like one person decided all of a sudden that all foods wrapped in dough shall be referred to as dumpling from here on out. This means we have to dive into the world of theories and speculation, and I have my own theory on this matter. That theory being we have none other than the British Empire to thank for dumpling becoming the dominant word for dough wrapped foods. The British Empire, for better and worse, shaped so much of the modern world, with one of the biggest exports from Britain across the globe being the English language. English words are used all around the world thanks to this empire. I can just imagine British explorers searching far corners of the globe and coming across the food of the locals. They could notice that they had food wraps in doughs like dumplings found in Norfolk back home, so called them dumplings too. This could then spread across the globe and before you know it, all these kinds of tasty foods were being referred to as dumplings. This could then happen more so as these kinds of foods found their way to the English speaking world in countries like the UK and the USA via immigration. The English speaking world has also had this bad habit. Instead of learning how to say a difficult word, they just use an easier word for them instead. In the past, English speakers may have struggled with words like jiaozi and gyoza, so instead of actually learning how to say them, they would have just called them dumplings for easy's sake. So my theory on the matter is that it all comes down to the power and the laziness of the British Empire. And I really need to stress that's just my own theory on the matter. And this whole idea of calling all of these foods dumplings might very well be just an English language problem. Other countries might use their own versions of the word dumpling as an umbrella term for these types of food. Like I found the Polish term of kluska which is dumpling in the language. Do they use this word for all these foods? Or do they use pierogi, their kind of dumpling? Or do they just use all their specific names? I have no idea. If you speak a language other than English, let me know what the situation is with the word dumpling in your tongue. Also, one final fun fact I just found out regarding the word pierogi, that term is actually the plural form of their name, with a singular one being called just a pulog. Yet for some reason, in English, pierogi is used as the singular and plural form. I guess this adds credence to my personal dumpling theory that English speakers are lazy when it comes to words from other languages. This video topic was suggested by Nancy Moon Smith over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a name explain video and wish to enjoy name explain videos ad free as well as get exclusive content and your name at the end of these videos, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just $1 a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you.
Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.